Hey there, Chad here, and this is episode three of my Pro Cycling Manager 2023 Complete Beginner's Guide. This is halfway through the first race, and we're going to pick it up already in progress. They're kind of pulling away a little bit. We're trying to keep up with them, and now I'm getting myself in the lead again. And we should be at 12 soon. There's 12. You'll also notice down here, it gives me a, a notification. Um, but I can't predict when those are coming up. That's why I keep the screen handy. And also, once it gets to 100%, it will stop giving that percentage. So I don't know when I've gotten to the 125 to maximize my experience. Now we're going up a grade, over 3%. Actually, it looks like we're going to hit eight and a half, almost nine percent. That's a quite a hill. Let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, and he's telling me return to quiet control at the front. Okay, and that's kind of what I'm doing. Let's talk about the gradient and and what is actually happening here. So when we hit gradients, there's one factor to what number is used down here. Once this hits three percent or above, we're going to be using either the mountain, the medium mountain, or the hill value. So for me, mountain is the best, medium is next, and then hill. I think this is entirely counterintuitive. I struggled with this quite a bit, but basically the way it works is it literally is driven by what your effort is set to. If I'm at 85 or lower, I'm using mountain. So for me, that's pretty efficient because mountain's my best score. If I'm from 85 to 90, it's a sliding scale. It will use some of this, and it will also use some of medium. And when I hit 90, it's using only medium at 68, okay? And then from 90 to 95, it slides and it uses hill. It, and when I hit 95 and above, it is strictly using hill. Effort here is what decides which of these is used. It has nothing to do with the gradient except that it applies once the gradient is three or above. That was really hard concept for me to understand because in my mind, hills, are little and mountains are big, right? So I would think hills had to do with a lower gradient and mountains had to do with a higher gradient. And that's just not correct. It's strictly effort. And the second part that's counterintuitive is I would think that hills would be less effort because they're not as hard, right? And mountain would be more treacherous and much harder. And it's the flip of that. The idea is you expend a ton of energy briefly to conquer this particular hill, to punch through it. And that's why the puncher is good at hills. Mountain is a longer, much more grueling, but elongated process. So you're not going to hit it as fast, um, but it's going to be something that challenges your endurance and stamina because it's gonna last for a very long time. So you're gonna use less effort to climb the mountain and you're gonna use more effort when it's a hill. That's the way this one works. Okay, let's get back to racing. It looks like we're about a third of the way through the race. Again, I turned the commentator off for now. I'll probably turn him back in future videos, turn him back on in future videos, but for now it's uh, kind of pleasant not to hear him jabbering about how far behind the Peloton is falling from the leader in that. So we're gonna go ahead and go. <clears throat> like I said, I wanna get to 19 kilometers lead. I'm at 16. Once I get to 19, I'm just gonna relax. Um, not gonna worry about anything at all. Gonna put myself in the uh, hold position mode. And that is right now, I'm literally going to hit W and we're just going to let the race go. Now, I want to pay attention to a couple of things while this is happening. I don't want to fall way to the back of the Peloton, first of all, and I don't want to see a big group break away from the Peloton because that can be really difficult to, to bridge. We'll come back to him. Keep saying that. Uh, we'll come back to him in a second. So uh, while I'm speeding up time, even up to eight times speed, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm competitive. I'm not... Uh, so I'm making sure over here I'm not like all of a sudden, whoa, why am I using a ton of energy? Uh, I'm making sure that I'm not suddenly at the very back. And then finally, I'm making sure that my water bottle is full or at least has water in it. You'll notice the top is now dark. That means that it's starting to use some of the water. Uh, and we will either need a teammate to refill us or we'll want to go back and do that ourselves. And that's not the worst thing when we're in the Peloton uh, with particularly on a flat with, with riders that we can ride with. Okay, real quick, we keep seeing this guy say, help me out or keep me out of the wind. There's a few things you can do when you, uh, when you have a teammate that you can, when you right click on him, one of them is I can follow him 
Okay, I can check my distance from him. This is kind of an advanced feature, not going to worry about it. I can take position here, and I think what that means is it's going to basically find him and it's going to put me where he's at. I'll kind of right alongside of him for a while. Can't use this one on him, but I can use it on other folks. What it does is it allows me to um, interrogate them in a sense. I get to observe them and I can learn about their abilities. I'm not sure why you can't do that on teammates to speed up the process of you know seeing what they're good at in that, but uh, this is the way the game works and that's fine. So I'm going to go back to my teammate and I'm going to say I'm going to protect him. So what you'll notice is I have this icon now and he has this icon. What that means is that I am going to basically be a wind block for him. I'm going to lead him in the wind um, and I'm going to try to protect him from any wind. What this will do is save him energy and I will expend energy. Now you've noticed I've already expended some. This does not come back. This is because I was leading at the front of the, the pack and I wasn't you know, cycling with other folks. I was basically just out there to get the time in so that it would help out. Other folks have, you know, this guy has a lot of energy used. He doesn't, and that's because our team has been protecting him. We want his green bar to be as large as possible for the end of the race so he can spend that energy then. So what this does in practice, I need to click on myself here again, is I will fall back and you'll notice that I'm going to be, uh, come back to me, I'm too exposed to the wind. Now, that's what I've done. <laughs> so we're going to ride in a manner that protects him from the wind. So right now you'll notice the wind is coming. It's a headwind from the right. So we are in front of him and to the right. So he's riding in our wind shadow there. Sula's probably helping a little bit as well, although I don't think that's intentional. Okay, and we'll just do that for a while. Let's see how the race plays out. Oh, somebody fell. Yeah, when we went flying by that one guy, I thought maybe that's what had happened. It looked like somebody was just standing still and we sailed by him. Okay, now he's telling me to get a breather while I can. Well, I'm, I'm already, I'm only at 75% effort and I'm at maintained position. So there's, I can't really do much less. I could turn down my effort, but 75 isn't, isn't a trying amount. So we're gonna just stick with what we're doing. I can decide to stop shadowing him. I think if I click this again, nope, that didn't get rid of it. What I might have to do is click one of these. Yeah, there it goes. So that goes away. Now you'll notice that because of where I was, I just kind of fell back a little bit, but I'm holding position in the middle of the pack. Actually, it looks like I'm moving up now, which means the rest of the Peloton is not putting out a lot of effort. And that could mean two things. I might be doing too much work and I might want to back it down, or this might be a race that I can do substantially well in. Now, while this is going on, if we look up here, there's a bunch of other icons and you can play with these yourself. This is settings, some information. These are camera views. I like the default view myself. That's what I use. Time controls. And then there's this guy. And I like this guy, particularly when you're in a stage race. What you can do is click on this and it basically shows you um, if I temporarily hold down the end key, it would allow these names, anybody who falls into one of these filters, I'd hold down the end key they would show up here. Now, since this isn't a stage race, uh, we don't have a best climber class. We don't have a points class. We don't have a young flat riders class. So wouldn't be very helpful in this particular race. But in general, that, that it's, it's kind of a neat way to be able to see the information when you want it. One thing I could do, and I can't see any of my teammates right now. Let's go to where I see a teammate. There's There he is up there. So he's just a little bit ahead of us there. If I move this over here, what you'll see is his name tag went off, but if I hold down the end key, it shows up again. Now, lock is showing up because my mouse is on him. If I move that off, there's Funta, and that just turns it on and off. That's a nice little feature. And I started finding that really useful uh, in stage races when I was actually competitive, it would help me maintain in my head or behind of somebody that I'm trying to uh, either catch up with or stay ahead of. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use the effort cursor and we're going to see what happens there. We're going to stick at 77 and eh, let's drop to 75, but I've now hit effort and I'm kind of holding steady there. Well, maybe moving forward just a smidge. Yeah. Got the wind at our backs right now. That's helpful. And we just continue to move forward. Now I'm not working with anyone, so I'm using more energy than I really have to. Oh, and I see something happened here. So Lupe is here. 
not good with Portuguese names, my apologies, but he has fallen off the back. So if we look down here, here's the Peloton. This is where we're at. We're in the Peloton. You can see that here as well. There's 44 riders in the Peloton. A minute 17 back, there are 19 riders in group A1. One of those is this teammate, okay? So if I had control of other teammates, but he's fallen outside of my group, I won't be able to really do anything with him. So that's just something to know there. If you have somebody in a breakaway ahead of you, they'll show up there as well if, with an E in front of their name, E1, E2, E3. And that's pretty good too. Right now, I hadn't noticed this, but the uh, first of all, we've whittled that down to minute 20. I know at one point it was at three minutes or so. Also, the group consolidated. As you recall, there was three E's in front of us, E1, E2, E3. One only had one rider in it. We either caught him or he caught up with folks in front of him, but ultimately there's seven in the main group, excuse me, in the lead group right now. And then the Peloton is seven. Let's go ahead and finish this race, see what happens. Uh, a few other things to note. This is how much is left in the race. This is not our value though, this is the this is the leader's value. So the leaders are 18 kilometers from the end. Over here is where we're at on the left side. 18.3 is where we're at. So we're about a kilometer behind them. Shows how fast we're going, our gradient, the wind. If there is a hill climbing uh, checkpoint or a, a sprint point where you can earn points, that will show us how far we are from those. That's what these over here are as well. And then this is our values. Just a quick look at those. If we click on other riders, our teammate here, we will see his information, including his values, but we don't know anything about him, so we don't have values for him. That's what that's showing us. And I can't click on any of the others. Do we know something about him? So here was one at the beginning of the race, we have the pi values. We can see those here as well. Okay, let's go back to us and finish. I like to use the gel, and we're going to go ahead and do that here in a minute. The gel is not an instantaneous thing. So if we look at the breakdown here, the blue bar is where the, the thick blue bar is where there are riders right now on the course. And then there's a darker line in there. I'm not sure if you'll pick that up on my video or not, but far to the right, I guess maybe 15% from the far right side is this dark line. That's where we are exactly. So we're just starting while well, we're on the downhill slope. We're going to have a small level and then we'll drop down to that bottom basin down there. When you take a gel, it takes time for it to kick in. So ideally, I want my gel to kick in just as I'm hitting that gradient spot there where we're going to be going uphill. And what that'll allow me to do is work a little harder and not burn as much energy. So I can maybe try to overtake someone or maybe try a breakaway if I think I can sustain that. At this point in my career, I don't think I can, so I'm not going to be doing that. But it is a way to maintain a lead or to try to capture a lead, particularly in a really mountainous race with folks that aren't good at mountains. You can really take advantage of that. And if you use your gel just right, uh, it's it's amazing for your performance there. So here's that line I was talking about. This is where we're at, right about here. So I'm gonna take the gel right about here and I'm gonna hope that it kicks in right about here. That would be ideal. So then I'll be able to work just a little bit harder without spending extra energy. And of course, it's a guessing game. I can't really be all that precise with it, but I'm gonna hit it right now, I'm hitting I. And what you'll notice is this starts to flash. While that's flashing, it means that I've used it, but it hasn't kicked in yet. When it kicks in, you'll notice this is going to start flashing over here. There it goes. So right now, my gel is effective. And if I push a little harder, and I'm noticing I'm actually to the top of that summit for the most part. But if I push a little harder, my red bar is not going to drop that much. I think it drops half as fast, is, is what it says. And you'll notice that I can really kind of cause some trouble for some of these folks. Kind of pushing through there and my gel just stopped. So I'm going to go ahead and back it down. Otherwise I'll start to really spend that energy. By the way, we're down to three miles or three kilometers. So I'm getting ready to sprint. You'll notice this S is here. Um, that will burn this red bar very, very quickly. Running out of yellow here will burn this red bar very, very quickly probably can use it for a little less than a kilometer. So I'm going to wait till I get to about <clears throat> 0.8. The leaders are at 2.3. I'm at 2.8. So I'm a half a kilometer off of the lead. Uh, notice they're still in the breakaway, by the way. That's pretty impressive. 
oftentimes the breakaway doesn't make it. This one happened to make it. There's two guys up there. Uh, but basically, to make my best finish, I'm going to sprint to the end at about 0.7 or 0.8 and try to cross the line just as I run out of all my energy. Perfect ending to a race. So we're at 2.0 right now. And sprinting, 0.9 is when I decided to hit it. And you'll notice that bar just went tearing down. Now as you approach the line, what happens is uh, time slows down. It slows down to show the leader, and then over here, it starts to pop up who's finished in their finishing position. So Christoph won, he was the favorite, you might recall from the interview in the magazine at the beginning of the race. And it'll go slow until the first 20 have crossed the line. With a little luck, we're gonna be in that top 20. And I wanna show you as we hit the line, I'm gonna hit pause. <clears throat> I've run out of all my energy, so I'm slowing down just a little at this point. I probably should have driven this up to 99. I didn't think to do that, but nonetheless, there we go. So we hit 17th, 17th place in our first race. I'll take that. The race will continue until everybody finishes. Uh, I fast forward through that because that can take a while in a huge mountain stage. Some of the riders are an hour behind. We don't want to wait. Of course, the time is compressed, so we wouldn't be waiting an hour. We'd be waiting a couple of minutes, probably. And that's the end of the race. There's a replay we can watch. Uh, we can go to the podium. I typically just go to the results. The podium is just a an elaborate results page. It has guys you know, showing up on the podium, taking the trophy, things like that. OK, so here we are. We're in 17th. And. There were no mountain stages or sprint stages. If there were, we would have the ability to look at those classifications. And then also, if this was a stage race, there'd be another two categories. One is the stage and the other one is general. General is the sum of all the stages. And that would show you your position there. Little surprise, there's not a youth category. Usually there's, uh, for the youth, the young riders, there's, there's a category as well, um, even in just a single stage race or a classic, basically. With this being a cup race and being mandatory, uh, maybe it doesn't break it down like that for a reason. We can look at how our team performed. What I will say about this is in these cyanide races, I don't think this applies at all. They've added these filters this year, which is fantastic. I can look at my whole team and see where we finished. 17 through 52nd, that's not so bad. Total riders is like 100 and, oh, it's only 72. Okay, so 52nd isn't exactly great, but it's not horrible. But if we look through the teams, we're probably gonna find a team, you know, their best finish was 25th, right? 21st, they did well. 26th through 64th, that team did pretty poorly, if, if we're being honest. So the team here that's Leopard, if we go look at all the teams, it has Leopard in fourth. So I don't know. I, that seems like that's not making a lot of sense to me. Um, Leopard seemed to have a lot of riders that were way, way, way back. Uh, and we're four places below them. That doesn't make sense. I don't think that's working well in these early races. I'm not, haven't seen it in the stages yet to know for sure, like in a, a multi-stage race. Uh, I have run a couple of those in my, my own game and I didn't notice a big problem with it. I, I really just noticed this today when I was preparing for this video. Um, so I don't know if that's a long-term problem or not. And maybe I don't know how that works. Uh, perhaps they eliminate the lowest rider or something like that to calculate this value. I, I just don't know for sure. And then we go next. And here's where it tells us that we did some good stuff. Congratulations. you uh, Your exploits in the Cyanide Cup 1 race, I gained experience points. I finished a race, so I got 10 points. That's great. If I'd finished in the top 10, I would have gotten a few extra points for that. It's kind of like achievements, right? Oh, you won your first race, you get 30 points or something like that. Oh, you finished in the top three, you made the podium. In races that have other classifications like mountains and things like that, you'll get points, experience points for doing well in those as well. This is effectively an achievement, right? This is only going to happen once. First race finished. First race you win, that's only going to happen once. But winning a race will give you experience points as well. Okay, and then this is that objective. So because we did more than 25% over the, 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 the requirement, we got an exceptional 
value and that gave us six points. And from what I can tell, six is the most you get on these. If I had done 15, I think I would have gotten five or four points. Um, but since we did what we needed to, got all six points. As you can see, we got a ways to go. If we do really well in one of the next races, this will this will get eaten up really, really quickly. There's a few more achievements that'll occur, you know, top first top 10, things like that. And we'll gain points pretty quickly. The manager satisfaction, we want this to be at 100%. So it starts at 75, we gained 3%. That's acceptable. This will continue to go up as long as we're meeting objectives that they set us or if we're winning races. As you do well in a race, they like that too, even if you completely blow up your objectives. In my personal game right now, my objectives are impossible um, in several of the last races. It wants me to start a breakaway. My, my rider is not someone who can start a breakaway. Uh, it wants me to start a breakaway right, right away and then stick with it for like 100 kilometers. My rider can't do that. Uh, so I've missed many of these. My manager satisfaction has continued to go up though because I'm finishing the race as well. Okay, well, I think that is enough for this episode. It's been kind of long, but we've completed our first race. And I hope you enjoyed this. I will go ahead and plan on recording Cyanide Cup 2 and Cyanide Cup 3, and then we'll get on to a couple of other races. Thank you for your time and this time. And until next, fair travels. <laughs>